There's a place in your heart, and I know that it is love. And this place is much brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, you'll find there's no need to cry. The people that I'm going to be interviewing today have actually caught up with them previously, and it was the work that they did previously that then helps them do this work. Well, it sounds confusing, but Chris Hill is going to tell us more about it. Chris, nice to see you again. Uh, nice to be here, Paul. Good. Now, we I've interviewed you, I think, three or four times now. Yes. And the previous time, it was at a school just off of um, South Patio Road. Yes. And that was, am I right in saying that? But that was uh, money that was donated from the Ambassadors Club of Antwerp. That's right. The Ambassadors Club of Antwerp gave us uh, about uh, 3,000 euro, okay. uh, and that was used for Mercy Shelter and also for Kunpai at uh, at the school. Okay. Yes. All right. Of course, and our viewers are very familiar with the, the work that uh, Pastor Fred and Diane do at the Mercy Centre. But we're now on an economic downturn. It's all doom and gloom. Or is it? Magli, yes. tell us what happened. Well, it's quite difficult to raise money in Belgium and I guess anywhere now because everybody's feeling the crisis. Mm. So what we did now is um, one of the teachers in that school that raised the money is one of my patients. Okay. So I talked to her and she's totally interested. She got her whole team going. Mm-hmm. And so the kids of the school of Koninklijke Ateneum Marcel raised the money we're giving today. And how much is it? It's a hundred thousand baht. So this this isn't. I mean, that was the ambassadors' club the last time, and this is just school children. So how did they? I mean, that's a lot of money. How did they raise that money? They sold cookies. They sold donuts, hot dogs. They had a sponsored run. Um, they had poems. They sold to each other, and even the small business of the school, because it's an economic school. They teach economics. The profit they made was given to us to. So we could give it to the kids here. So this comes with all the love of Koninklijke Ateneum of Mortsel Antwerp. Wow. Isn't it amazing that this work is happening all the way across there by these school children who are going to be now effectively really changing the lives of people in this community. Now, Chris, there's how many people, how many in this, this slum area here? About between 70 and 80. Okay. It's a transient uh, community, so that, that number can go up plus minus 20. Okay. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. I mean, it's always good for us to show this on TV and show that, you know, there is, this is a, a part, another side of Pattaya, it's another side of Thailand. Um, and we arrived here today and they've got the music blaring and it's great and everybody seems actually very happy. You know, it's, uh, it's funny, sometimes we get, we get caught up in what we think happiness is and it's not always what you think it is you know it's yeah. not as white goods and video recorders although we need a video camera obviously they do this but you know what you know what i'm getting yes. at now tell us about a couple of the the people that are here i mean there was one there's one old lady who's uh i see she's in a wheelchair tell us a little bit about her story well that's kunsunida um and if you point your camera over here at Actually, the lady yeah, in the wheelchair. Shoot, we have a shot of her, yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. So now, Kun Sunida was uh, 64 years last year. Mm-hmm. She had an accident 14 years ago. Okay. And she was paralyzed then from about the middle of her back down. And she's been lying in her bed in that shack, which is pretty grim, for 13 years. For 13 years, she did not come out. Goodness. When she did come out, it was because the whole area was flooded and literally her bed was floating. Oh my goodness. And so we thought, well, she needs to come out. And the next day we found a wheelchair right. at the Mercy Center and Pastor Fred said, you can take it for that. Yeah. So it came down here the same morning okay. and Ajahn Sane, uh, he said, uh, he, and she was just overcome she was just overcome wow. yeah well i'm sure it's uh, i mean she's she's out here now she's having a drink it's actually pretty hot although it's coming up for five o'clock now Magli, you're you're actually a, a doctor yes. aren't you and uh, you we noticed that you were tending to a young lady here earlier what had happened to her i think she broke her foot Ooh. ouch ouch yeah right. so what's going to happen well we take her to hospital and that'll take, how long will that take to well, repair you? Approximately four weeks, four, six weeks to heal. Now, one of the other people who sort of touched your 
heart uh, for you guys because when you when you do these things you you know these are these are big projects and you're putting money to um, communities but there's one specific person that you're actually going to be helping out with someone who's got a, a passion it's very similar to to yours tell us a little bit about that um, it's the girl over there mm-hmm. and she wants to become a doctor okay. so we're going to try to help her out right, now she's she's uh, as Chris was saying she's got her hair cut short so she's, yes. she's still at school her name's Aploy I think it is, yeah. is it Aploy mm-hmm. so she wants to be a doctor yes so so how, how are you actually going to help her out what are you going to do well, we've got a small gift of money to give her. It's a start. Well, it is a start, but that's that's wonderful. It's great stuff. But, but also, we will keep in touch with her progr- progress twice a year okay. and really make sure that she's got the resources that she needs. Mm. She puts in her work. We'll make sure she's got mm. the resources she needs mm. to finish the to finish the course. Okay. Now, there's a gentleman here today who, who you're, you're effectively going to be handing the money over to, yes. uh, Ajahn... Sunny. Sunny. Uh, now, w- and we met him again previously at the, yes. the the previous one that we covered for you. What's his part in that? Is he is oh. he the gentleman that shows you where the need is, or how does it work? Well, Sunny does do that. He's got a children's shelter, mm-hmm. which is called the Agape, which means love shelter, mm-hmm. and there he's got I think 32 children, right. and many of the children are from this community, okay. but. This community here is one of, I think it's 11 on this road. Uh, So there are lots and lots of these communities, very, very poor. But the primary focus is providing education for these children. And a daily meal and, if you like, hygiene, uh, care like knits and lice and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, And effectively, education is the main door out of the slums. Yeah. It's the key to the door and the door itself. Yeah. And if we can help to open that, we've done, we're, we're happy to do that. Yeah. Then we'll look to look, do more. Of course, <laughs> of course. But it's as you said earlier when you were talking about uh, Nong Ploy, it's, uh, it's going it, to, it'll be the first rung on the ladder. But um, effectively, if it wasn't for people like yourself, there wouldn't even be a ladder, would there? Yeah. And the kind of wonderful thing now is this is given by students to kids and students. So I think it's kind of wonderful. Yeah, it's great. Yes. Okay. It is. Anything else you'd like to add, Chris? No, except I'd like to say thank you to you, Paul, okay. and to your team, and also to Peter Malhotra and his team at PMTV, because, well, you've been great. And we use your material in promoting, we use your interviews, Mm -hmm. sometimes uncut, just straight in there, Mm -hmm. to help people in Belgium understand what the problem is here and what they can do. Well, it's very kind of you to say that, but I mean, you know, we we are acutely aware that when people are doing fundraising, it's it's wonderful, and 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 I, and I hope that the work that we're doing for you today can go on to help facilitate something else because this is really. You know, grassroots stuff. This yeah. really shows uh, the conditions that these people are living in, and uh, and I'm sure that the work that you're doing and the work that's going to be continued to yeah. go on will uh, continue to enhance the the people and children yeah. uh, of Thailand. All right, Magli and Chris. Oh, Magli has a dream. Oh, you have a About dream. A primary health clinic. Oh yes, I would to start a primary health clinic here. I would love to do that. So I guess we're going to go around schools and ambassadors and rotaries a lot more. Okay. Well, okay. you can we'd have a full-time nurse yes. and uh, where the people in places like this can bring themselves to a point not too far away mm. and then get signposted to a doctor if they need it. If not, they've got uh, medications they can take on the spot given by a qualified person. Mm. That's Magali's one, right. one of her dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's wonderful to see you again, and we'll, I'm no doubt we'll see you again either later in the year or next year. Okay, this is uh, Paul for PMTV with Magli and Chris, and oh, you, this girl's got a beautiful name. What's your name? Thais. Thais. Spelt like Thais. Is that yes. great? Yes, like Thais. <laughs> wonderful. Okay, see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>